The Sumerians were a deeply religious people, showing profound reverence for the gods and a strong sense of morality. Their daily religious rituals were a testament to their piety, not only to the gods and priests, but also to themselves. The daily rituals were not just those performed every day, but included traditional and common religious ceremonies. In this video, we will explore these rituals and how they were performed. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Ablution and Bathing Ablution was a necessary ritual for the Sumerians, not only for prayer, but for any religious activity. It was accompanied by various religious utterances. Ablution seemed to be limited to washing the hands, using a ceremonial basin called abzu, found in most Sumerian temples, such as in Eridu and Lagash. The basin was connected to running water channels outside the temple. It is believed that ablution was a religious practice to draw near to the god Enki, the god of water, wisdom, and creator of humans. Touching his water to the human body was considered a purification and recreation of the body. Prayer There is no evidence that Sumerian prayers were performed daily and at specific times. Sumerian prayers seem to be extemporaneous supplications directed to a specific god, recited in temples, homes, palaces, or elsewhere. Prayers differ from hymns as they are pleased to the god and are not accompanied by music, while hymns are praises to the god often performed with musical instruments. Prayers could be conducted with a priest or alone by the worshiper in front of a god's statue. Prayers were often accompanied by specific rituals and gestures indicating the worshippers' reverence and the offerings they presented, varying according to time and place. The content of the prayers included priestly words and offered a mythological experience to the worshipper, focusing on requests and thanksgiving. The Fasting Religious abstention from certain types of food was a form of fasting practiced by the Sumerians. Priests, possibly for economic reasons, would recommend abstaining from certain meats, fruits, or vegetables for a specified time, framed with religious or mythological justifications. The Hymns Hymns were ritualistic, often performed with musical accompaniment. The Sumerians called hymns shur. Hymns varied in length, some not religious, particularly those dedicated to kings. Hymns differed from prayers and spells as they were spiritual songs reflecting on the gods' qualities and invoking blessings, whereas prayers were specific requests for health, success, or justice. Spells were ritual texts to expel demons by invoking the god and good spirits. Sumerian hymns were divided into priestly and royal hymns. Priestly hymns glorified the great Sumerian gods, while royal hymns praised kings and their deeds often including praise for a specific god. Hymns were performed with known melodies and musical rhythms, with instruments like drums, tambourines, and lyres, often accompanied by temple dancers. Purification Purification involved burning incense, pouring liquids like water and oil, burning and burying objects, washing and making sacrifices. Purification was based on the belief that humans and places were surrounded by evil spirits. To connect with the sacred, materials symbolizing the gods were used for purification. Water and oil represented the god Enki, fire represented the god Nusku, and libations and sacrifices represented the god Shulshaka, son of the god Ninkursu. Burial referred to the god Dumuzi, and burning symbolized the god Utu's connection to fire and the underworld. Incense burning Daily incense burning was a ritual performed in temples by purified priests and other priests, like the exorcist, Ashipu, who used incense, particularly harmal, believed to expel evil spirits by filling the space and driving them out through doors and windows. Temples had high altars for incense, with a place resembling a stove where incense was burned daily or during other rituals. Special incense containers were held by priests during exorcism rituals. Pouring liquids Besides incense, pouring liquids like water and oil was a method of purification and expelling spirits. 
Oil was specifically poured on the bride's head during weddings, possibly accompanied by washing, mentioned in the reforms of Urukagina. Pouring oil and anointing were also done during the king's coronation, using a special vessel for sacred water. Ritual of Opening and Washing the God's Mouth This ritual bestowed life upon new statues of gods. It involved placing jars of sacred water, red and white cloths beside the statue, offering sacrifices, washing the statue's mouth with specific herbs, cedar sticks, cloth, salt, cedar resin, fats, precious stones, butter and syrup, and reciting ritual phrases. The priest would lead a ram with the statue to the riverbank, placing the statue on a reed mat facing east under a canopy, offering sacrifices again, pouring beer, slaughtering the ram, placing a fish and a turtle of gold and silver, a bronze axe, and a copper tong inside the ram's skin, and casting these into the river, accompanied by ritual phrases. The statue was then placed in the designated temple, completing the ritual of giving life and spirit to the statue made by craftsmen. Feeding the Gods Priests responsible for god statues performed this ritual daily, offering various foods to the gods. There were two main meals, one around noon and a secondary one before closing the temple. Priests provided food from temple offerings, sourced from the best agricultural fields, orchards, and livestock. These offerings also fed the temple's priests and workers. A table in front of the god statue would hold vessels with water, drinks, food slices, and fruits. Often the food would be given to the king afterward to bless him or signify the connection between the god and the king. Substitute Ritual This ritual involved transferring a person's misfortune to another through direct or symbolic contact. The substitute could be chosen by the afflicted person or their priest, and contact rituals were rare. Indirect rituals, symbolic, were more common, using a doll made of dough, clay, wax, or wood, representing the enemy to transfer the misfortune, for example, illness. The doll was kept near the patient, then cast into water with a magical incantation, namburbu. Sometimes, animals were used as substitutes. The patient would keep a goat kid beside them overnight before the ritual. The next day, a grave-like pit was dug where the patient and the goat kid were laid, with a symbolic and actual slaughter performed. The goat's body was treated with respect, washed, perfumed, and wrapped in the patient's clothes. The priest would recite a morning prayer, declaring the goat's death, symbolizing the patient's recovery. Funeral meals were offered to the goddess Ereshkigal to honor and pacify her, followed by the goat's burial, symbolizing the burial of the now healed patient. These rituals combined contact, animal contact, and similarity, simultaneous slaughter, exchanged clothes, respectful treatment of the goat's body, and death declaration. Sacrifices Sumerian ritual sacrifices varied between plant and animal offerings. Plant sacrifices were frequently offered to temples, including fruits, while animal sacrifices included bulls, cattle, goats, deer, fish, pigs, and birds. Animal offerings were linked to the god's animal symbol, Enlil's bull, Nanshi's fish, and Ninurta's horses. And in conclusion, we see how the Sumerians lived lives filled with piety and deep respect for their gods. Through their daily rituals such as ablutions, prayers, fasting, and purification, they sought to balance the demands of the self with the dictates of nature, avoiding sin and drawing closer to the gods. These rituals are reflected in the details of their religious life, representing a blend of deep faith and spiritual philosophy, where every element of nature and ritual played a role in cleansing the individual and elevating their spirit. We hope this video has added to your knowledge and understanding of the Sumerian civilization and its religious practices. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated with all our new content. Thank you for watching, and see you in upcoming videos.